Welcome to the North Group Podcast. At North Group, we are often invited into organizations to influence leadership and organizational behaviors. It is through these sustained relationships that we gain a deeper understanding of each client and the many ways they benefit their employees, their customers, and the broader community. It is impressive. Through this podcast series, we will be sharing the stories of a few of these clients and how they make our communities better. I'm your host, Roger North, and I'm very pleased to be here today with my friend and my partner, Brian Black. And we're having a lot of fun with uh, this series of uh, stories that we're telling in 2022, which we've dubbed 25 Stories for 25 Years. And it's super fun today to be talking about a great Central Pennsylvania third generation business, Risser's Poultry, with Brian, you know well. Give me a start in explaining the history of Risser's Poultry and the current stewardship of Jeff Risser and Mike Herr. Roger, glad to do it. Yeah, I'm, I'm very proud to have the privilege of journeying with this third and really now fourth generation business uh, located right here in Lidditz, right in our backyard. Uh, they started back in 1928, so we have a 94-year history here in this business. And what I love about this business is they started as a transport company. They were transporting chickens. That, mm-hmm. that was their bread and butter. But over the years, they've done something that's been so wonderful to watch. They've expanded their business, moved into the world of production. So you know now they're producing chickens for consumption. They're producing uh, eggs, so they're in the food chain. Then they moved and, and expanded and said, hey, we also could offer services to help farmers manage their flocks more effectively. So expanded to flock management. And then in 2021, they uh, decided, hey, there's one more piece that we'd like to offer, and that's poultry handling, which would be uh, men and women who have the skill of actually catching poultry, Mm -hmm. loading poultry. Mm -hmm. So they've created this full service model. And when I say third to go into fourth generation, what's so powerful about it, you know, many businesses are just proud to get to the second, let alone third, but we have this fourth generation. Statistics are against them, aren't they? Statistics are against them. But we have three family members who are not only in the business, but influencing the business and heading toward uh, making this a fully owned fourth generation business. And isn't it interesting to see each generation add its own cultural touch, certainly, but I think in this case, more its own skill set and how they think about the business, how they could provide greater services to their client. And I I guess in this case, we'd, we'd be looking at a classic case of Vertical integration? Would that be a, oh, a fair way to think about it? That's right. And, you know, when you think about, you mentioned Jeff Risser and Mike Herr, yes. who are the current owners and older generation. They brought a very unique set of skills, different from their fathers, that really allowed that. That was the generation that propelled the business okay. into these various lines. And they brought that skill set that the prior generations established the values, established the who Rissers was going to be and how we're going to go to market. But I see the third generation as the one who had the skill set and the drive to grow those business lines. The fourth generation has a level of understanding and maybe even sophistication in terms of thinking about leadership and culture, even in ways that their fathers haven't. And so just going to add another another element of value to this, what's going to be a fourth generation family business. Absolutely. And it's fun to watch. And, And of course, not only am I enjoying watching it, but the team at Rissers has experienced the impact of how these generations have moved and how each generation has brought something different. Such a privilege to uh, to advise them and be involved in that process, isn't it? It's fun. You know, you don't like to say you have a favorite client, and we would never say we do. But I would say that when I know that I have a moment with anyone on that team or that team, I look forward to every interaction. Yeah, that's, that, that's fantastic. Now, Rissers are not the only folks that we know that are in the poultry business. What when you think about them, what would you say makes them different or distinct or perhaps even provides, a, I guess, a competitive advantage of some yeah, nature? How would question. you think about that? Yeah, there are some distinctives about Rissers that some are very obvious to the world, some are very obvious to the team, but I think all offer competitive advantages. One of the things about Rissers that is very unique, they have a core value of excellence, and I think a lot of our clients will have that core value, mm-hmm. but the question isn't, does your core value say excellence, but what does it look like? Yeah. And so in their world, excellence really means we are literally going to bring our absolute best game to everything we do. And whatever it takes to do that, we're going to do that and we're gonna be consistent. And if we're not, we're gonna keep pushing to stay there. So it's, 
as simple as the shiny red trucks mm. that you see on the road, and they are distinctive. We're not going to put anything on the road that isn't just our best representation of who we are. When we have a process or a procedure or a way of handling chickens, we're going to do it in the most excellent, humane way. We're not going to slough off on anything we do. That's one big competitive advantage because they are consistently on the top of their game. I think that uh, core value of excellence is so interesting because as you said or implied before, it's a fairly common uh, phrase to be used for a company and core value. You probably see that across a, lar a lot of large companies whose websites we could access. But I think what you're explaining there is you're explaining that they've really worked hard to gain a common understanding within RISRs of what excellence means. Because all of us could bring some difference to the level of excellence or the way in which we achieve excellence in, in almost any endeavor. But the real challenge is for leadership to establish a common understanding of what excellence looks like and then have some degree of common accountability around it in order to establish the consistency to which you refer. You have described it very, very well. In fact, that's really where the leadership team had to begin okay. to understand we can use that term, as you said, but what does that really mean? And how does it really impact us first? Mm -hmm. What does that mean for how we lead? So when we talk about excellence, we're not just talking about how we go to market. We're talking about what does excellence mean for us mm -hmm. as leaders? What does excellence mean for us as employers? A good story. Yeah. When, when, when Jeff and Mike started the handling division, so Rissers now would have 88 employees. Okay. And it's a sizable business. Two years ago, they would have been uh, perhaps at 50. So to give you a sense of, of the growth, I'm, I'm, I'm close on those numbers. When they started the handling division, they really are largely employing foreign workers in mm -hmm. that division. Sure. And of course, ethically employing them, people that are validly here in the States, you know, working. But they also have to house them. And hmm. they made a decision that we're going to provide housing. And that's common in this industry. But when we provide housing... We're going to locate residential homes. We're going to furnish them the way we would furnish our homes. Provide, Seriously? Yes. Wow. Provide them with That's everything cool. they need. So when you visit the homes, they own five properties at this point that house their, their crews. When you visit the homes, and I have, these are home-like places. And when you talk about what excellence looks like, excellence means that when we're providing linens and towels and silverware, and she, we're providing what we would provide for ourselves. That's powerful. That's what excellence looks like operationalized. Wow, that is such a great example. Yeah. And I, I've never heard a story like that before. In fact, you and I have both seen housing that's provided to foreign or what previously was called migrant yes. workers. Mm -hmm. And it's, I guess it's adequate on some yeah. level. That, that is such a great example. And when you think about the competitive advantage, you have a team of people, and this is true, you know, the retention there, the, the, the team that's there tends to stay there. And not just in their foreign worker uh, handling crews, but in their drivers and, and all components of their business. The other thing that I think gives them a very strong competitive advantage is they are very relationship driven. Now again, lots of our clients would say relationships are important, but the intentionality and the longevity of their relationships with their producer partners, with farmers, they're working with farmers now that multiple generations of farm families have worked with multiple generations of rissers, their processing plant, multiple generations. And those relationships, they work hard to proactively nurture those relationships and not take them for granted. Again, a competitive advantage, absolutely. And as the economy and as the commodity markets move and things move and shift in good years, hard years, mm -hmm. the partnerships stay firm. Ag is not an easy business to be in. Number one, I think the first thing we would recognize about it is the cyclical nature of pricing in that business, which is often, to a large extent, out of the control of the producer, out of the control of the processor. But the consistency of this company over, what did you say, over 90 years now? Uh, 80, 94 years. Yeah, 94 yeah. years. Yeah, so yeah. we'll have to do another story when they hit 100 if you and I are still around. Oh, yeah. um, but one of the things I was thinking about here is we often talk about, and it's really one of the themes of these, of, of these stories, is how well-run organizations bring 
multiple benefits to the community around them. And you've already described in one way the way they interact with their workers, the way they bring excellence to their workers. What other observations would you have about how Risser's Poultry brings benefit to the broader community around oh them? It's probably an easy question. Yeah, it is. Well, the first thing, let's not forget, they are a major part of the food chain. And oftentimes, and you've certainly heard me say this before, we, you know, we go to the grocery store and take for granted the fact that those eggs and that chicken and whatever other commodities we enjoy have been produced by the sweat of the brows of many, many hardworking people. And Risser sits squarely in that and frankly is supporting and help providing uh, sustainable markets mm -hmm. for countless uh, ag families. Mm -hmm. So you just think of the agricultural world that they serve and the egg world and everything. That is a powerful uh, contribution to the broader economy and community. Narrow it down just a little bit more. And, you know, again, we're employing 88 people, 88 families yep. who I would say, and I think that the, I know the leaders of Vistas would say this, it's important to us that we are caring for our families like they're our family. And so, again, I could story tell, I won't, the times that individuals in their team have hit difficult situations and how the whole organization has just stood beside them, stood underneath them. Beyond that, they're great corporate citizens. They're great citizens of our community in terms of being actively involved. They serve the ag community. They provide leadership into the ag community, into our volunteer boards. You look around in our marketplace and men and women from Rissers are serving just about every place you can imagine in the ag community to try to, again, bolster the quality of life uh, for all of us. And and then just, I, I guess I would spin this almost personally, is this is where it's so much fun that, that you and I have a, a business that we're co-owners in that is concentrated in a pretty small geographical area. And, you know, there's, there's, there's positives and negatives, but for us, the positives way outweigh the negatives. And it, just as you're talking about these two families here, I'm thinking, well, in one way or another, I've known Mike Herr for 40 years. And then turn around to the other end of the equation is that Jeff's son, Mark, who is terrific. Yeah, he's a terrific young man. <laughs> His wife, yeah. mom and dad, some of Carolyn and my best friends. So yeah. it's just these connections where you can see people living out their commitments, not only inside of a business because they know it'll propel the business, produce profitability and all these kinds of things, but they live it. 24 hours a day, seven days a week, because we're, we see that. We're interconnected with them in the community. It's such a wonderful thing to see, and it makes, I'm sure there's many other areas of the country that behave similarly, but sometimes we like to think of ourselves as being yeah. somewhat unique here, mm -hmm. and I think there is a uniqueness to that that solidity, because we're talking about you having the privilege of, be, of, of, of helping to influence a healthy third to fourth generation transition here. Just terrific. And it's been beautiful, too, to your point, Roger, that with Risser's impact in the community, how generous and open-handed they are. So I can count on more than one hand the number of times I have suggested to someone who was looking for guidance or mm -hmm. perhaps just needed direction to say, hey, let me make a suggestion. Give someone at Risser's a call. Yeah. They'll be happy to point you in the right direction. The, the generosity is it really it just it's hard to measure it because it just ripples in so many different ways into our community. You've probably already answered this question several different ways, but I'm sure you'll be able to give me one more. Uh, what's one thing that other organizations could or would learn if they spent a day or a week with the Rissers team? That's great. There's there's a couple things that come to mind right off the top of my head. And number one is, you know, Rister started as a small business, a small family business. Mm -hmm. And I've told the story of how they've grown. As they've grown, oftentimes we'll see business owners sometimes not invest in building a team that's cohesive mm -hmm. and excellent as a team. And, and, and they, they can stay in the doing mode, head down, let's all get our jobs done, let's stay real flat, and let's just all keep ourselves... What we would learn from this team is that investing in your people, mm -hmm. being extremely careful that you're not just hiring a resume, but you are hiring a person yeah. who is going to be in your organization. And doing that person at a time and giving them room together to grow and learn, sky's the limit. Sky's the limit. 
100%. Thank you for bringing the story of Brister's Poultry to me and to our larger community. Another in the series of our 25 stories in 25 years. Thank you, my friend. My privilege, Roger. Thank you. Thank you.